you know, the, the purpose of the University of Wisconsin study was to, well, what kind of impact do co-ops have? On, on the, on the um, US economy. And so one of the things, it's a really significant study because one of the things they had to do was really identify them, which is, is not necessarily easy. And we know that they haven't found all the co-ops that are out there. So it's also a directory. So one of the impacts and nice things for people is that um, we now have a better um, directory of co-ops. Um, and then they tried to see, you know, well, what is the significance of these? And they found some pretty uh, interesting findings. They found that there's some about 30,000 um, co-ops in, um, in the U.S. and those co-ops account for about three trillion dollars in, um, in assets, over 500 billion dollars in re total revenue, 25 billion dollars in wages and benefits, and approximately a million um, jobs. And they even say in the study that that is an underestimation. It's a very conservative estimate. But if we, you know, a lot of times people want to go, well, what's, what's the use of this kind of business model? What does it do? And unfortunately, many times what we do is we solidify that down to what kind of economic impact they have. And what we can say is that co-ops are a good, strong sector that contribute valuable things, uh, money, jobs, all those kinds of things to, to communities. So... You know, there really have been a lot of changes, but partly because it's just like any business area, it's not stagnant. You have to be able to change as times change and so forth. And I think as I think about it, one of the biggest ways that co-ops have changed, they've changed a lot based on different sectors. So I'd say the underlying change is just adapting to changes that everyone is needing to to uh, to change with. But I think there's a recognition as we've seen um, especially the traditional corporate s sector basically s gobbling each other up and becoming bigger and bigger that there's a need for co-ops to be able to better compete. And so what I see are a lot of attempts to um, recognize that co-ops working together is going to strengthen the individual co-op. So associations like um, the um, Federation of Worker Co-ops was formed a few years ago so that they can support one another, um, share in common some uh, issues that emerge. Um, also, um, the housing sector has, has had that for quite a while with the National Association of Housing Cooperatives, but consumer cooperatives over the last 20 years, particularly you've seen a lot of that, um, noticing the need to work together, to share information and so forth. And so you have um, the Consumer Cooperative Management Association that does that. Um, and then there are, are also, there's actually what's become a cooperative of cooperative development centers all across the United States, of which we're a member called Cooperation Works. And again, we're just sharing information, trying to um, really strengthen our ability to um, form and support co-ops. So one of the most exciting developments in California over, I think, the past um, really 25 years uh, is seeing the change that has uh, has happened within the food co-op world and, and that's that if we look around California we see uh, cooperatives that were started in the let's say 1970s possibly as late as 1980 and our own Davis food co-op is one of those um, we also have uh, cooperatives like uh, Rainbow Grocery we've got um, Santa Rosa Community Market Quincy Natural Foods, Sacramento Natural Foods Co-op. They all started in this era of um, the mid-70s, early 70s. And then all of a sudden, you look at um, 1980 through 2000, and there were no new food co-ops in California, not a single one. And the thing that, um, that we'd forgotten here, uh, now this being 2010, is that um, the original food co-op, I, I guess you'd say, were the Berkeley co-ops. There were a dozen food co-ops throughout the uh, the Bay Area, and the first one was was in Berkeley. And um, due to a lot of things coming together, and that co-op went uh, went bankrupt in 1989 or so, um, and that really had a chilling effect uh, throughout California. And it's one of the reasons that I think that people really didn't look at uh, new food co-op development because that was really such a traumatic experience. But here we have, we're in a post-pollen environment um, and we have really looked at the local food movement um, and have really questioned, criticized, not been happy with uh, the, the food offerings that most of our conventional grocery stores um, are able to give us. 
And, um, and so over the past, let's say, five to seven years, there has been kind of a, a new growth in food co-ops, uh, beginning with actually um, <clears throat> food buying clubs that have been organized using the internet. So um, most of these food co-ops that we have that are 35 years old, they also started out as food buying clubs, um, but didn't have the benefits of, um, of the internet to organize themselves. And now we have groups like the Lake County Community Co-op with more than 200 members uh, doing collective purchasing for, um, uh, for organic foods. And uh, they're getting ready to make the decision about whether or not they're going to open up the, a, a grocery store as a consumer co-op. Um, we have groups in, in Placerville that are uh, wanting to buy out a retiring um, natural food store. And, and organize it as a, a consumer food co-op. Um, and uh, what's exciting is that a lot of this development is actually happening in rural areas like Lake County, Point Arena on the coast of Mendocino, Placerville, um, also have been learning about uh, one in Shasta County. And, and so this kind of, this is great rural development and, um, and, and one that hasn't historically been the, the, the base of the, uh, the, the consumer food co-op world. And, and so from, from my desk and from me traveling throughout California, this is probably one of the more exciting kind of resurgences is the, uh, the, the renewed interest in organizing food co-ops, to, especially to meet um, the locally grown foods movement. So the other half of it, um, addressing food deserts in urban um, areas, and I uh, look at all of the activity that's happening in Oakland as being the, uh, uh, the best example, um, that um, Mandela Marketplace, uh, organized as a worker cooperative, is setting up um, their, or has already opened their grocery store in West Oakland specifically because um, supermarkets over the past 20 years have just picked up and left for the suburbs and left for other communities. And so the people of Oakland have put in a lot of energy into reopening um, a grocery store, and now it's being organized as a worker cooperative. And, and so that is expressly there to address what, uh, what we now know are food deserts. And um, there are other attempts in, um, in Southern California that are also um, trying to address this. So when we look at, um, at, uh, at places uh, on the outskirts of Los Angeles, there's new, um, new, new efforts to start uh, food co-ops. And, and so this is all really very exciting, and that's where we're seeing the main activity of food co-op development is in places where we have seen supermarket flights, so communities are taking care of, of their own um, food access through food cooperatives.